Hello, everyone. My name is Mongli, a PhD student from uh, Nanjing University. It's my great honor to present my work here to introduce the work named as the CISO Counting Filter, an efficient guardian for vulnerable negative case during dynamic filtering. Uh, the title is a little long, but I will introduce the problem a little bit um, and more. Um, the presentation is composed of four parts as listed. Um, I shall start from the background part. Uh, this paper studies a very classical uh, problem named the membership testing problem. This problem can be studied as, uh, is an element uh, E in a given set S? The problem is very simple, but um, very fundamental in many applications. For example, uh, in, in the web systems, you need to check whether uh, UI is, is malicious according to the blacklist, or in cloud systems, you need to check whether a file is stored in a server or in a k-value key key value uh, database systems, you need to check whether a given key study a solid string table. Although this paper is very fundamental, uh, actually answering such a uh, simple query is, very, is not very difficult. For example, you can use some indexes like uh, search trees or hash map. Uh, however, this index is very is not space, in, uh, space efficient as it need to store all keys uh, uh, which leads to very slow query and uh, space overhead, um, even for such simple query. Um, I'm going to introduce another more practical approach uh, named as balloon filter. Uh, the, the key design of balloon filter is to reject some uh, negative queries as early as possible. Uh, it's key uh, to, to insert an element. Um, balloon filter has uh, a bit area as the underlying data structure and uh, no other uh, electric or very complex operations. To insert an element into it, the first maps the inserted key to uh, key different bits with key hash functions and uh, set these bits to one. Uh, when inquiring these elements, uh, we just need to recheck these uh, mapped uh, bits. If all these bits are, uh, are one, and it, this query key is considered to be a positive key, that means this key is in the set. Otherwise, uh, if one or more um, bits are zero, then this, this key is uh, considered to be a negative. Uh, uh, as you can see, with the only underlying data structure, uh, a bit airy, this data structure is very uh, elegant and space efficient. Uh, however, uh, you must you must pay the price. The price is that from filter is not 100 100% accurate. It has one-sided error rate. Um, uh, th this means that when when it when it tells that a key uh, in the set, it may it may not be accurate. But it say if it says that a key not in the set, is it is always right. This is so called one-sided error. Uh, however, uh, the Bloomfield pro provides very elegant property that this error rate is bounded when the space uh, you, when the space you can you, you provide is large enough. Um, although simple, although simple, uh, Bloomfield has been widely applied in different uh, applications, including Google Chrome web browser, um, Twitter media and uh, even uh, the, the, the Bitcoin systems use it to speed up wallet uh, synchronization. Um, however, the original Bloom filter does not uh, uh, support key deletion. This is very important, important for many applications that sometimes you need to move something out. So the, so the key deletion is a, a critical operation that are needed by many applications. Uh, so to uh, make a Bloom filter support key deletion, um, the previous works extend the uh, balloon filter to counting balloon filter. Uh, the extension is rather uh, straightforward, just uh, reply, replace the underlying bit array to a counter array. Uh, so, uh, correspondingly, when you need to insert, delete, or query, you just need to increase, decrease, and check for uh, non-zero uh, non uh, counters. Uh, these are similar to balloon filter. Now, however, this year, uh, this recent years, uh, we, we came into more scenarios. Uh, one scenario is that actually we sometimes can get more information about the negative keys. Uh, the negative keys here means that uh, some keys definitely should be rejected or not in the key, not in the set. Um, uh, this negative keys can be obtained from many ways. For example, you can 
um, analysis the system tracing and logging, you can get some uh, negative keys. For example, uh, web systems sometimes collect the uh, security information of different websites. If you find some web, uh, dangerous website, you can definitely um, label it as negative. Uh, other, other examples, including the network intrusion detection systems, they collect the information of the intruder and the anti-spam systems collecting the spam email server information. Um, um, the second way is that you can actually get some negative keys from the public data set. For example, uh, the Google and the Twitter. Oh, oh okay, uh, sorry, I, I saw the message. Um, the second way is, is that actually you can get some, um, some keys from the data set, public data set. Uh, for example, Google and some uh, uh, some security companies sometimes re release some new uh, newly collected data set of, uh, um, for security uh, concerns. For example, you can get some malicious IP addresses and malicious URLs, or even some uh, spam email server addresses. Uh, this is uh, this is uh, uh, for us a new scenario. Another new scenario is that uh, sometimes we we actually notice that this negative key may have different costs. One natural question is that what does this cost here refer to? Um, actually, the, the, the cost may have many, many, many uh, meanings. For example, for applications involving security, the cost here means the, the threat level. Uh, for example, some spam emails uh, deliver virus or phishing rather than just uh, some simple advert advertisement. And some notorious website even steals your private information. Um, and, and the second, the second, uh, the, the second example that can decide the meaning of a uh, cost is the frequency or popularity of some uh, some, uh, some some items. For example, uh, some malicious URLs may be accessed and ten times more than another in a single day. Uh, or, or some even spam emails have significantly delivers more emails to your email box than, than another. So, so, so um, when we notice that uh, actually these negative keys have different costs, uh, we, we need to handle them carefully. Um, for cl clarity, we denote these negative keys with high costs as vulnerable negative keys uh, in our context. So, uh, our key problem is that how do we handle this ne vulnerable negative case when you want to filter in uh, most negative keys? Uh, here are listed the, uh, the prior filters limitations in terms of three aspects, including uh, cost sensitivity. Um, this means whether they are sensitive to the cost of negative keys and uh, uh, dy dynamicity. This means whether do, do you support incremental adding adding more keys into the uh, filter? The, the third the metric is the prior knowledge. Um, this means uh, do you need to know all the keys or part uh, or part of the keys? Um, for counting volume filter, it is actually insensitive to the negative key costs. Um, the second kind of uh, filter is a learned filter. Learned filter is uh, uh, based on machine learning models. However, these filters has no guarantees of accuracy as well as uh, incremental building. Um, the, the last three filters, they are cost-based filters. They are sensitive to the uh, key's cost. Uh, however, uh, no, no dynamicity or incremental building are supported by them. They only support you build, uh, build one time and uh, no more uh, adaption to uh, key deletion or key insertion. Um, so our key problem in this paper is how to handling uh, uh, this vulnerable negative negative case uh, with uh, the the four uh, the four below uh, goals. We need to uh, we need to design a new filter supporting dynamicity and uh, achieving a high operations throughput. Uh, meanwhile, the new filter should be more accurate and uh, space efficient uh, than the traditional filters when you come across these vulnerable negative keys. Um, now we shall start with the proposed approach. Uh, 
Uh, we start from the um, key technique we, uh, we, we propose. The key technique um, uh, we, we use is called hash function modulation. Uh, the modulation here is an, another, uh, as, uh, another concept used in the signal processing field. We, we borrow it here to illustrate that uh, we, we change the hash functions of conflict case. Um, for, of, um, for example, as the figure shows that if the positive key uh, X is inserted to the third slot, then the, uh, the, uh, the vulnerable negative keys below M1 will be misidentified since all its uh, mapped counters are larger than one. Um, so here, we, and one, one natural way we, we, we want to affect, uh, avoid such complex is to uh, change the hash function from H2, H2, H2 to H3. Um, uh, such process of changing the applied uh, hash functions for a key is called uh, uh, hash modulation in our paper. Um, although simple, but directly applying uh, the hash modulation is not uh, uh, that easy. Uh, so we develop, uh, uh, we develop a, a new field named as CISO counting field. I will explain why, why it gets the name CISO counting. Uh, Overall, the hash, uh, overall the, this CISO counting filter has two parts. Uh, the first part named the hash modulator. It is used to store the modulated hash functions for this case. And the second part is called a CISO counting array. Uh, this part is used to encode the negative and the uh, uh, positive case. Um, the, 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 um, our detail on the design of CISO counting area first. Um, CISO counting area actually is composed of uh, many CISO, con CISO counter. Um, it's an area uh, it used to record the number of negative keys and a positive keys mapped to each counter uh, respectively. It has two parts, the negative cell and a positive cell. The negative cell record how many positive key, uh, ne how many negative keys mapped to uh, this counter, the positive cell, uh, records that how many positive keys uh, maps to it. Uh, when, when no keys maps to this counter, it uh, is the, the sensor counter. Then it is an uh, uh, empty sensor, uh, sensor counter uh, with with no one maps to it. However, when uh, a negative case maps to an uh, uh, empty sensor counter, then it will become a negative sensor counter. Uh, when you, when the, the when the um, later case that maps to the negative set of counters, it will be modulated to other uh, positive set of counters or empty set of counters. Um, these two cells are exclusive, but not strictly. Um, on if if the hash modulation works. Uh, the the second part is the hash modulator. The hash modulator is actually a hash table. It is used to store the modular hash function for each key. Um, each, each slot in the, hash, in the hash modulator has two parts, the hash modulated counter. Uh, this counter is used to uh, record how the number of positive keys maps to this slot so that when you uh, insert a new hash function into, into this slot and or deletion from, from this account, you can uh, just manipulate this counter so that no inconsistent operation will exist. The second uh, field is called the modulated uh, index. This index is actually the index of your hash function. For example, if you use the H4 um, hash function as modulated, as modulated hash function, then the index four will be stored into the uh, second uh, second field. Um, however, even with uh, with these uh, structures, how do we uh, ensure the one side arrow of our system counting field as traditional blown uh, counting blown field or blown field? Um, uh, correspondingly, we de develop the modulated insertion procedure and the modulated query um, procedure. Uh, we started from the uh, modulated insertion procedure. The modulated insertion procedure actually is the two-round insertion procedure. It has two rounds. The first round repeats the classical counting bloom field insertion procedure. Um, there were checks 
if any of the mapped counters that is a negative Caesar counter mapped to, uh, if no, then we just uh, um, in increase all these mapped counters by one. However, if one or more of these Caesar counters are negative, then we need to modulate these counters to other uh, positive Caesar counters on or, or, or empty Caesar counters. This will activate the Second part, uh, second round. The second round is composed of the step three, steps four, and step five. Uh, the second, uh, the first round is just uh, the step one, step two. Uh, we give a running sample here. Uh, for example, uh, if you if you want to insert the key X into the uh, seesaw counting area, however, the second hash function H two maps to a negative seesaw count uh, S three. So we need to modulate it. Modulate it its hash function, we then change the H2 to H4 uh, because H4 maps to an empty Caesar counter. Uh, then we need to store the index of H4 uh, into the under, onto the below hash, mo hash modulator with the with hash function um, maps to the uh, fourth slot and, and changes to and changes the index to four and increase the modulator count by one. Uh, correspondingly, we have the uh, modulated query procedure. The query procedure is is, is uh, just uh, is actually one one step and one step corresponds to the modulation insertion uh, to ensure one side error. Uh, the two round query procedure is also similar to the insertion procedure. It has two rounds. The the first round is composed of the step one and the step two. Uh, uh, the second round composed of the uh, step three, four, and five. Uh, for example, in the second, in the first round, if if the query um, we need to query, we need to query find that it maps to a positive, uh, positive it, it, it maps to a positive CISO counter, but uh, not but not all of them. Then we need we, then we need to activate the second round to check. Where the uh, modulated hash function can help us to find a correct uh, correct set of count area. Uh, and running example here is that, for example, uh, if we use the uh, initial hash function h1 and h2 to check the set of area, uh, we find that the h2 maps to a, a negative set of count area. Then we know that it may be modulated. So we we stop we stop here. And tries to get tries goes to the hash modulator to get its um, modulated hash function. Uh, the, the index tells that its index is uh, four, so we modulate H two to H four, and uh, we check the uh, S eight for for the membership testing of X. Uh, in S eight, we find that its positive cell is actually larger than one, so we can uh, say that uh, the query that uh, key X is actually in the field. This is the overall uh, framework of our purpose the counting filter. Uh, uh, here is the evaluation of our approach and the previous works. Um, in, this, uh, in this experiment, we use two data sets, uh, including the, the Shalas blacklist. This is the URL blacklist uh, widely used in the web systems. And the second is the YCSB. It's a database benchmark from Yahoo to evaluate database spend, um, performance. And also to simulate the, to simulate the, uh, the negative case with different uh, costs, we increase from the, we use the zip, skin, zip food distributions and the use the skinless factor increase from uh, 0 0.5 to 2.5. One warm up soon. Okay. Oh, um, here. Oh, uh, here is a, a use them uh, evaluate evaluating metric we used here. Um, uh, we use the metric uh, weighted FPR. Uh, uh, note that the, the lower weighted API is the better uh, the performance is. We use three baselines here, that, including the traditional counting bloom filter and the weighted counting bloom filter and a stacked filter. Uh, 
we we evaluate uh, the operation latency uh, first here, and that we can find that um, our uh, uh, filters almost uh, has the uh, almost has the uh, comparable operation latency that is comparable to the traditional counting balloon filter. Uh, actually, they are very close to each other uh, in, in, in terms of three oscillations. Uh, oh, this is the accuracy ex experiment. We can hey, find Manali, that. Uh, yeah. we are a bit out of time. So can you try oh. to wrap up the presentation? OK, I will, I will yeah. end it. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, OK. Uh, uh, on, on the two data sets, we found that our approach is always the uh, best uh, uh, approach. Uh, and when the skewness increase, uh, increase, we can even find that the performance gap, performance gap can be over three orders of magnitude. Uh, this here is our conclusion for this work. Uh, um, oh, thanks, everyone. Uh, uh, we have released our code uh, in the GitHub repo. If you can, uh, if you have any problems, you can contact us.